160 ampere hour dead battery one point three volts here I am filling the battery with the rain water because it is completely dry and the funnel that you see is a 3d printed one link to download it has been provided in the description you can check it out zero amperes charging current zero point zero two amps so it is increasing eleven point six two volts moving on to the second stage high speed charging So the battery has stabilized at 12.3. Let's do further tests. Here is this great news guys. I have this new website www.electrondeals.com. You can see there are so many countries listed for products to buy from Amazon and if not then there is Banggood Worldwide. Here you can see similar products are going to be listed in two pages just like the other countries and if we click on the buy on Amazon link you are going to be redirected directly to that page of the product from where you can buy. You don't have to go and search for the products. Link will be provided in the description. You can check it out. So coming back to the video now the battery has recovered so let's do the short circuit current testing with my 600 amperes clamp meter link for which has been provided in the description you can see that the short circuit amperes are around 50 because this wire is thin and i don't want to discharge it the voltage is 12.04 volts stable even after conducting the short circuit test. This indicates that our battery is fully recovered. So here as you can see that the battery has been connected to my computer UPS and this is a 100 watts bulb. And it is glowing pretty good. So the battery is fully recovered now. Now let's check the drawn amperes and here we have around 7 amps. <music> This is a 12 volts car battery. Plus, it is not working, so it is discarded. The battery, as you can see, is filled with electrolyte. Now, this is a 12 to 18 volts battery charger plus power supply that I'm going to use to feed this battery for hydrogen gas. On close up, we can see that the bubbles have already started coming out. So let's accumulate them in one place using my new 3D print.
So I've changed the power supply for more current and at the output end I've connected that syringe. Turning it on. Showing zero amps, connecting the battery. And we have around 20 amperes, quite high. So here I'm connecting the exhaust fan to the 220 volts AC supply for testing it. Turning the switch on. So that's the maximum speed that we are getting here. It's really bad. So the motor is out and I understand that if I replace the condenser and oil up the motor, it is going to run as good as before, but again at low RPM, which is not my requirement. So I had to replace the motor anyways. Here I've connected my DC motor speed controller to the motor for testing. And uh, this controller I made in the previous video, link for which will be provided in the description. You can check it out. So here I have reversed the joiners. Moving on to the motor installation part and I have placed this black tape for further grip. It is 220 volts, 4 to 5000 RPM, permanent magnet DC motor, 30 watts. And this is how it looks. Yeah. Finally, a big capacitor holder.
so here i'm going to use only 60 volts power supply for running it and yes and the connections are fine Now, because of the limited size of the exhaust fan and only 30 watts of DC motor, the suction pressure of this mini jet exhaust is okay and not excellent. Plus, I'm also using this 10 meters long pipe, which is further reducing the suction pressure. 